data scientists in the United States tend to make tens of thousands of more per year on average than their data analyst counterparts. I actually wanna make a really strong case for staying as a data analyst. Hey everyone, I'm Chris Brule, Maven's lead Python instructor. And in this video, I'm going to break down some of the factors you should consider if you're thinking about making the leap from data analyst to data scientist. Before I jump into those factors, I quickly want to recap the differences between the two roles. Data analysts tend to focus on analyzing historical data to spot trends, patterns, and insights that can help improve the operation of the business. Data scientists also spend a lot of time analyzing data, but they tend to leverage more advanced statistical methods and machine learning models to help make more quantitatively driven decisions and automate decision-making processes in mass. They also tend to work with more ambiguous and unstructured data, leveraging tools and coding languages that most data analysts haven't learned. But data analyst is the most common data role and for good reason. Businesses have a lot of questions that need to be answered and a lot of data that needs to be monitored. And so in some circles, data analyst is viewed as a less than title than data scientist. And while data analyst doesn't require the full suite of tools that data scientists do, I actually wanna make a really strong case for staying as a data analyst. I tend to disagree with the notion that data analyst is a less than role, it's just a different role. And data analysts, in my view, actually have a more flexible opportunity set in their career. Data analysts, because they are working so closely with the business and often learning a lot about a specific business domain, often have more opportunities on the business side of things rather than just being pegged as a technical professionals, which is often what happens to data scientists. And again, data scientists probably are wiping their tears with the extra money that they're earning with that more quantitative title. But I do wanna point out that if your goal is to climb the career ladder, maybe get into upper management, data analysts might be a more viable role to achieve that. But I don't want to discount data science as well. If you're a data analyst who truly loves working with data and is passionate about growing their technical skills, then data scientist is an amazing potential next step in your career. I just want to point out that this transition isn't for everybody. But let's go ahead and talk about some of the motivating factors for why somebody might make the jump from data analyst to data scientist. First is curiosity. A lot of data analysts work with data scientists pretty frequently. There's a lot of handoff in between the work that data analysts and data scientists do. So if you've really enjoyed seeing the presentations of data science or maybe are inspired by the machine learning tools they use, then that is a really good signal that you should at least take a look at some of the courses around data science and see if this is something that really clicks with you. A lot of data analysts that make this jump were also STEM majors in college, so science, technology, engineering, mathematics. They have done so much quantitative work in the past, and when you get into data analytics, you realize that there often isn't a ton of advanced math going on. And so a lot of data analysts who miss that type of work see data scientists as an opportunity to flex more of that quantitative muscle. And so if that's your motivation, then data science is an amazing track for you as well. And the elephant in the room is obviously going to be salary. On average, data scientists in the United States tend to make tens of thousands of more per year on average than their data analyst counterparts. And that's a totally valid motivation for switching, right? A lot of us are working to live, not living to work. And if we can get paid more in the hours we're working, then that's a great decision to make. But I do wanna point out that if that's your only motivation, but you absolutely hate math and statistics or are allergic to programming, then you're probably not going to make it very far in the jump from data analyst to data scientist. And let's talk about what it takes to make that jump. If you're a data analyst already, fortunately you're about halfway to becoming a data scientist. You already know how to work with SQL, you're fluent in some spreadsheets or business intelligence tools, and you're pretty comfortable with basic statistical metrics like mean, median, mode, and hopefully a little bit about distributions as well but you're going to need to dive deeper into statistics as well as refresh yourself on topics like multivariable calculus and linear algebra because those are what power some of the advanced methodologies that data scientists use on a regular basis. And we certainly don't need to be PhD level in math or stats, but you will need the equivalent of undergraduate staples like multivariable calculus, basic linear algebra, and probably junior level statistics in order to make it in this field. In addition to those basic statistical metrics like mean, median, and mode, data scientists also need to be very comfortable with topics like hypothesis testing, distributions, sampling methodology, linear regression, multiple linear regression, logistic regression, and so on. And 
we can learn a lot of these topics very quickly, but you do need to spend some time really understanding some higher level mathematical and statistical concepts. On top of the math and stats, you also need to pick up a programming language like Python or R. And if you love learning SQL, then you might find working with Python and R to be quite enjoyable. But the reason why we need these languages is because that's where the machine learning models live. And we need to learn a handful of machine learning algorithms as well. So random forests, gradient boosting, and k-means clustering, just to name a few, are going to be some of the algorithms you need to master. And in order to learn those, you need to be comfortable with math, statistics, and linear algebra. And so this is going to be a several month process for most of you who may have taken some calculus in college, but you're probably going to need to refresh yourself on the statistical and mathematical concepts to really understand these machine learning models. I will say that once you get back in that mindset, you'll be surprised at how quickly you pick it up if you were someone who enjoyed those topics in the first place. And so once we've learned all of the additional tools and skills that we need to know as data scientists, we then need to start positioning ourselves for the market. Remember, you're going to be applying for roles in a field in which you have no experience. You're starting from square one you're going to need a strong project portfolio to prove to potential employers that you're capable of performing the tasks that data scientists can. And so you might build projects on regression, classification, clustering, etc., in order to show that you're ready to jump into one of these roles. I also want to talk about the paths you can take to get there. If you already work closely alongside data scientists at your work, you might be able to convince them to mentor you and find opportunities to learn as you go along. So you can slowly transition from analyst to data scientist just by working closely with the data science team. Self-study is a valid option. There are also boot camps that vary in quality. I taught at a great boot camp that had very clear placement statistics. And if you're fortunate to find a boot camp that will give you employment data, I would suggest taking a look at those as well because you're going to be immersed in this language working with other people who are learning the same things. And it's a great way to learn quickly if the quality of the boot camp is high. And finally, there are also numerous college degree programs, both undergraduate and master's degree programs. Some master's degree programs only take a year, but they do tend to cost quite a bit. A master's degree program is actually what I did. It took me a year and I would vouch for the return on investment immensely. I find that most people who went to my program were able to get jobs. They were very transparent about placement, which is something I wanna stress, but the investment is high. And so if you're not sure, you might consider doing some self-study to really figure out if you enjoy working on data science type projects. I also want to point out that some data science roles require a degree in a related field. So self-study won't cut it for a lot of roles. They really want to see somebody who has a stamp of approval showing that you know deeply mathematics, statistics, etc. And that's just the truth of the matter. But self-study is a valid option. Just be aware that some roles you're interested in won't accept you because you don't have a degree. And so with all of that said, you might be wondering, why would I ever consider this transition? And I think it's important to remember that if you really like math and statistics, then it's an amazing next step in your career. You'll get to work on the subjects that you love the most and help tackle some of the business's most challenging problems. If you enjoy working with code or learning how to code, that's another very good reason to jump into this field. You get a chance to nerd out with some of the smartest people you'll ever work with talking about computing, coding, stats, and math in these meeting rooms where some of the people are just extremely brilliant and it's a very rewarding role from that standpoint if you're into that kind of thing. And because of that, you know, you're also going to be viewed as a quant or technical wizard by a lot of the business. And while many people are proud to wear the nerd badge, that is something to be aware of. The perception of who you are is going to shift from a business professional to a technical professional, and that can change the path that your career takes a little bit. And finally, you're going to have to be willing to dedicate at least a few months of consistent study. So mathematics, statistics, coding, etc., to gain all of the skills that you need. And then once you gain them, you're going to have the emotional roller coaster of applying to jobs, getting ghosted. And whenever we apply to a job in a new field, it's a lot scarier than applying for a data analyst role as someone who's already working as a data analyst, because at the very least, we know that we're capable of doing that. But when the market is rejecting us and we haven't even had a chance to work in this field, it can be a little bit demoralizing. But if you're patient and consistent and continue to work on that project portfolio, you have a very good job of getting a role in this field. You just need to know that it's not going to happen overnight in the majority of cases. And so I wanna wrap this video by reiterating that both of these are amazing career tracks. If you're a data analyst who loves math and statistics, as well as growing your technical skills, 
then you should really strongly consider jumping into data science. And if you're on the fence or maybe have been scared away by some of my warnings, there's nothing stopping you from taking a few cheap or free online courses, maybe getting a few books, and seeing if these topics are really clicking with you and if this is really something you wanna pursue. If you work at an organization that has data scientists, maybe try to grab coffee with them or ask them a little bit more about their work because that can be another way to collect data in terms of whether this is right for you. Please let me know if you have any questions about this topic. I'd be happy to answer them in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this Maven musing and we'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.